Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. For today's video, we're going to be building a gaming PC that you can actually afford inside the brand new Fractal Design at Meshify C Mini. That's assuming you have a budget of around $700 US, which admittedly is still quite a bit, but today that really doesn't get you much in the world of PC hardware. And not that long ago, you could build a very respectable gaming PC for well under $1,000 US. Today though, not so much. Typically, I'd recommend anyone keen on PC gaming aim for something like a GTX 1060 or an RX 570. Uh, they usually cost around $200 US. Today though, you're probably looking at more like $350, and that's half the price of today's budget PC build. Even entry-level graphics cards such as the GTX 1050 and RX 560 cost around $160 to $170 US today, and not the $100 you'd normally expect to pay. Granted, today's solution isn't quite that powerful, but it will certainly tie you over and offer a flexible upgrade to a more powerful or discrete graphics card once pricing settles down. In fact, PC gamers face not just one hurdle, but two. In addition to the higher graphics card prices, we also have inflated DDR4 memory prices. Therefore, with today's PC build, we've somewhat attempted to address these issues by providing gamers with a solid foundation that they can build upon in the future. The Ryzen 5 2400G and Vega 11 GPU have proven that they can deliver very playable performance at 1080p in most modern titles, albeit with low to medium quality settings. But rather than build the cheapest possible system that you can around the 2400G, for this build we're taking a different approach. Things like coolers, motherboards, cases, power supplies and even SSDs are all very well priced today, and investing in quality products here can save you money down the track while also enhancing the experience today. As luck would have it, coinciding with this build is the release of the new Fractal Design Meshify C Mini, a micro ATX case built upon the award-winning Meshify C design. Essentially what Fractal Design has done here is take the original Meshify C and shrink it down to create the mini version, pretty much like what they did with the Define Mini for example. You still get the same look and high airflow design, it's just a wee bit smaller, or shorter rather, 9% shorter in fact. So, the case is said to be coming in at $90 US, which is a little pricey. The Cooler Master Masterbox Lite 3.1, for example, can be had for just $50 US. The Meshify C Mini, though, is a much better quality case, in my opinion, that will handle higher-end hardware without an issue. So, there's certainly room to grow with this case. Then for the motherboard. Now, we could spend as little as $60 on the ASRock AB350M or MSI B350M Pro, but I found these cheaper boards are a bit of a hit and miss when it comes to overclocking and running at higher memory speeds above the AMD spec. You're also limited to just two DIMM slots, which makes future memory upgrades very costly, and since we are starting with 8GB of DDR4 memory for this build, having the ability to flexibly upgrade your memory in the future it would certainly be a welcomed feature. Therefore, I've selected the MSI B350 Mortar. I've had good overclocking success on this board already with the Ryzen 3 2200G, so I thought I'd give the Ryzen 5 2400G a shot. The feature set's also great, and it offers flexible memory upgrades with four DIMM slots. Again, it's a little pricey at $90 US, but I think over time, that additional investment will pay off. Once again, I'm going with the Deepcool Gamax 200T to cool the overclocked 2400G. It's a ripper of a cooler for just $20 US, though it is often found on sale for around $10, making it an incredibly good buy. Fractal Design has also set along their Celsius S24, which is a nice option if you plan to upgrade the CPU to something with a higher core count in the future. Then as I said earlier, keeping the cost down, we're going to start with 8GB of DDR4 3000 memory from Team Group. Their T-Force Dark Kit looks great, and at $100 it's well priced. Once memory prices start to fall away, hopefully at the end of the year or by the latest early next year, at that point you'd be able to buy a second kit at a much lower price, or at least that's the dream anyway. For storage, I recommend the new Crucial MX500 500GB SSD. It's a great value option at $135 US, costing just 27 cents per gigabyte. You can get the 250GB model for a bit less at $80, but it actually ends up costing more at a cost of 32 cents per gigabyte, so it's almost 20% more costly in terms of capacity. Therefore, I'd opt for the 500GB model, and that way you'd have to juggle installed games between the SSD and a slower but larger hard drive. Then finally, powering everything, we have the Edison M 750W, though finding this model in the US seems to be next to impossible. 
While a nice power supply, it's probably overkill for this build, even with future expansions in mind. Therefore, I recommend the Seasonic M12 to 520 watt bronze rated power supply for just $50. All up, the build comes to a total cost of around $606 US, and you have the makings of a really great gaming PC. For now, the Vega 11 integrated graphics will get you by, and once graphics card prices come back down to earth, you can throw in a $200 model and enjoy high quality 1080p gaming. So let's overclock the Ryzen 5 2400G and see how it runs inside the Fractal Design Meshify C Mini. Actually, before I did any overclocking, I tested this little rig in its stock, uh, into the box configuration with the glass side panel removed and then with it installed. And both were hour long gaming stress tests. With the door panel removed, the 2400G peaked at 45 degrees, which is very cool indeed. And please note, for all the testing, I did maintain an ambient room temperature of 21 degrees, or at least my office climate control did. Anyway, this is still an excellent result, so I popped the glass panel on and continued the stress testing. Installing the side panel made very little difference. The APU temperature increased by just one to two degrees, and with just three 120mm fans in total, the two case fans and the one on the Deepcool Gamax 200T, spinning at well under 200 RPM, the system was virtually silent. In fact, the case fans were spinning at just 900 RPM, while the CPU fans spun at 1300 RPM, and well, that explains why I was having a hard time telling if the system was even running, apart from the fact that there was stuff on the screen, but you know what I mean. Then when it came time to overclock, I didn't have as much luck with the Ryzen 5 2400G as I did with the 2200G. The CPU overclock was 100 megahertz lower and the GPU was 50 megahertz lower. Not a significant difference, but it was interesting to note that in the Overwatch stress test, I saw virtually the same performance between these two overclocked APUs. Anyway, relating to this video, the overclock 2400G and the Meshify C Mini maxed out at just 61 degrees. So another great result, and it's only five to six degrees warmer than the 2200G. Overall, what we have here, in my opinion, is a great little gaming PC that'll tie you over nicely till graphics card pricing becomes reasonable, or the next generation comes along, at which point we hope that graphics card pricing will correct. The beauty of the Ryzen 5 2400G is that it is an eight threaded CPU with plenty of raw power. So if you're in the market for say, Ryzen 5 1500X or Core i5 7600K slash Core i3 8350K, then the 2400G presents as a much better option as it offers a similar level of CPU processing power with what is essentially a free entry level GPU thrown in as a nice little bonus. This means down the track when you'll no doubt throw in a discrete graphics card for that extra gaming performance and you go for something like a GTX 1060, maybe a 1070 or even a 1080 if you're lucky, then you'll be in a position to take full advantage of it. At that point, you might want to throw in another eight gigabytes of RAM, but that's easily done thanks to our motherboard choice. The Fractal Design Meshify C Mini will also be with you for years to come. It's a fantastic case, and while it doesn't do or offer anything new over the larger ATX version, it doesn't really need to, and I'm sure many of you will agree that the Meshify C series was as close to perfection as cases get right now, especially for less than $100 US. Should you come into more money in the future, which would be nice, I can't imagine you'd find the need to ditch this case or get rid of it. The build quality is excellent. As I said, the design is really as good as it gets, especially for a micro ATX case. You've got room to throw in nice, expensive, full-length graphics cards. They'll uh, go in without a problem. Uh, you could put in a much taller air cooler than the uh, Gamax 200T that I used. And as you can see here, you can also quite comfortably install a 240 millimeter radiator in the top. And there's plenty of clearance for your memory modules and things like that because the radiator is offset. So that is a nice design feature there by Fractal Design. Out of the box thermals, they are excellent, but you can throw in a few more 120 millimeter fans if you want. For this configuration, it's completely unnecessary. The two case fans that it came with were more than sufficient to get the job done, but you can stick another one in the front and then two in the top. But now that I've installed the all-in-one liquid cooler, we already have the two on the top there. And of course, by default, there is the one in the back. But if you were to upgrade to a higher end graphics card like the GTX 1080 Ti that I just showed, or maybe a second generation eight core Ryzen CPU, for example, then you can throw a few more fans in and increase the airflow. If you care about bling, then you can also throw in an LED light strip to jazz things up and maybe go with some custom sleeve power cables. 
Now, I'm sure there'll be those that were quick to point out that we featured a rainbow colored 24 pin power cable in this build, but that was kind of the idea. It's a budget build and sleeve cables really have no place or certainly make no sense in a budget build. I'll admit in 2016, this kind of gaming performance for just under $700 US probably wouldn't have impressed anyone. So it doesn't really feel like progress, but anyway, in early 2018, this really is without a question, as good as it gets for those wanting to buy new hardware. On a positive note though, we have a really solid foundation here. Great case, great motherboard, memory, all that stuff. Once those pesky graphics cards come down in price, even 1440p gaming for just a, a few hundred extra dollars could be a reality. And on that note, I'm going to end this one. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to hit the like button if you did. Subscribe for more content. And if you appreciate the work we do here at Harbour Unboxed, then consider supporting us on Patreon. You'll gain access to our Discord chat and monthly live stream for as little as $3 a month. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.